Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek. Today I'm going to be going through the process of flashing a Sonoff USB Zigbee dongle to use in Home Assistant, uh, but I'm going to use Python to do this, so let's get into it. So all the links that I talk about in this video uh, are all in the description down below, so don't worry about trying to copy them down from the screen. They are in the, the steps in the description. Uh, but first of all, to get going with this, you're going to need to install Python. Uh, so I'm doing this on a Windows 11 PC. So I'm gonna go off to the Python website and download the latest version and run the installer. Um, one thing to, to watch out for when you're running the installer is just to check the add the, the Python to the, um, to the path. Just makes things a little bit easier later on when you're um, doing some more of the steps. So make sure that is ticked and just, just basically follow all the setup instructions all the way through until that has completed. So it's at this point that you should plug in your Sonoff dongle into your USB port on your computer. And uh, if you're fortunate enough, certainly on Windows, if you go into Device Manager, you should see that showing up there. If you're unlucky and it's got a little yellow triangle indicating that it's not been detected properly or it needs a, a driver uh, update, then this next step really is for you. So um, basically you're gonna need to go off to the Silicon Labs website and download the, uh, the drivers for this. Uh, again, really simple process. Download the, the file, it's just a package. You just need to extract that uh, to somewhere onto your machine. I've just created a nice Sonoff dongle folder and I'm gonna put all of these steps, all the different downloads into this folder. Um, basically, when you've got that extracted, you just need to right click on the dongle in Device Manager and just say Update Drivers and then point it to your um, extracted folder with your drivers and let Windows update the drivers the same way as you would do with any other device. Now, the next step really is starting to get into the meat of things. So what we're first of all gonna do is we're just gonna update and install some packages under Python. These just help with the remainder of the setup process. So what you want to do, you want to open up a command prompt in administrator mode. A normal command prompt won't work with all of this, so make sure it's in admin mode. And then at the command prompt, you type in this uh, this command line and just let that install those packages. Um, when that's completed, basically what we're going to do then is to install another package which will enable us to back up your dongle. Now this is uh, this is important because you know if you end up bricking your dongle in some way or you know something happens with it, you can at least go back to a backup. Uh, that you've taken so make sure you do this step uh, sometimes you see this list as being optional but personally uh, i would just err on the side of uh, of, of caution really so um, you know download this this package again the command is at the bottom of the screen let that run through and then we then need to type in the command to be able to back up the dongle and again that is at the bottom of the screen and when you press enter on that you'll basically just get a lot of information stream up the screen uh, as it, as it uh, basically backs up your device and it will save it as a, uh, a JSON file um, into uh, where you've gone and run your command prompt on your computer. So make sure you keep that safe because you may well need that in the future. So the next step, you're gonna to need to download the bootloader from GitHub. So go to this URL and basically you'll get a page there listed with uh, the repository for the bootloader. Click on files and then download zip and uh, you, you should end up with a zip file that then is downloaded to your computer. Copy that into your folder where you've, you've gone and um, created to store all of these uh, different downloads for, the, for flashing the dongle and just extract that zip file um, as is within that folder. So next we're going to download the ZStack firmware. So again, back off to GitHub, link down below um, if you want to type that in. And uh, basically you'll get another repository screen coming up. So just make sure it says master there, it should default to that. And you are interested in the launchpad coordinator, so you click on that um, line there, and then you should have a download link to be able to download that file. Again, it'll be another zip file, store it in your folder where you've got all your other Sonoff stuff and extract that file into 
uh, its own folder as well. So next, what you have to do is you have to take that file that you've just extracted, the new firmware, and you need to copy it into the folder where the uh, bootloader uh, zip file has been extracted to. So just copy that in there, and then you're ready to flash your dongle. So what you need to do is open up a command prompt, again, as administrator, and navigate into the folder where you've now got all of these files together. So that's with the bootloader and the firmware. Now, um, basically, you, you're putting this really long command line, uh, you know, so make sure you copy that out the description properly. There's a couple of things that you need to be aware of here. The first one is the COM port. So on the screen there is the COM port that my USB dongle has been detected as. If you don't know what yours is, go back into Device Manager and uh, just double check what it's been picked up as there and then just change that accordingly. The other one is the, um, the file name. So um, as you can see, this is dated. This is a date on the end of this file name. So if that changes and a more recent version comes, comes up, just make sure you aren't just copying my link and you are actually changing it to the, the file name that you've actually got in your folder. Once you've got that typed in correctly, just press enter and it literally just flashes the dongle in a matter of seconds. And if everything's successful, you'll just get a command prompt again. So once that's done, you can unplug it from your computer and just plug it into a USB port on uh, your device that's running Home Assistant. So for me, that is my Intel NUC and I'm gonna plug it into one of the front ports for now. Um, so one of the things when I first tried this uh, that caught me out, uh, because naturally you kind of, you know, when you go into Home Assistant and you see these notifications, you tend to go and click on them and, and do stuff. Um, so when I went into integrations, there I saw this new card for the Zigbee Home Assistant uh, integration and it had Sonoff and all that kind of stuff on it. And I basically went and configured that. Whatever you do, don't do that if you're going to use uh, Mosquito and um, Zigbee to MQTT. So um, basically, if you do that, when what you'll end up doing is you'll end up blocking the devices being found on your system. So just leave that as is for now and move on to the next part of this process. So the next part is installing the add-ons into Home Assistant. So you need to go into your configuration and your add-ons and click on the um, add-on uh, store button in the bottom right-hand corner and then you're looking for Mosquito Broker. So it's just there in the list. So you click on that and then install. So once that's installed, just uh, enable the watchdog option uh, on the, the screen there. And uh, I'd, I'd leave the auto update. You don't really want to be doing that with a broker. Uh, it could be more trouble than what it's worth. Um, there is a configuration uh, tab as well here. Just leave that as is. Don't click on start or anything like that. Just leave that for now. and proceed on to installing uh, Zigbee to MQTT. So to install Zigbee to MQTT, again, go into your configuration and your add-ons and click on the button in the bottom right hand corner. A Little bit different for this because it's not part of the standard add-on packages. So you need to click on the three buttons in the top right hand corner and then repositories and then put in the uh, URL uh, for the repository for the actual software. Um, which there'll be a link down below for that. And then um, on your list of add-ons on the screen, you'll have two options there. You'll have um, one which is a developer version, so it's kind of like the latest, um, you know, one that's currently being developed. Probably, you know, for stability reasons, I would steer clear of that. Uh, you know, there could be any kind of bugs or issues uh, on that release of the software. So go with the other version that is there and just click on the install. So once that's installed, just tick on the uh, the watchdog and the show in the sidebar option so you've, you've got it there in your um, side menu. Um, and again, I would uh, probably leave the auto update for the same reasons as I've mentioned previously. So now we just need to create that user that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So go into configuration and people and add user. And I'm gonna create one, I'm gonna call it MQTT user, give it a password. And I'm going to just say that it can only log on from the local network. Um, you know, I don't really want anybody kind of like trying to get onto this from outside. And I'm not going to enable administrator on this. So once you've done that, you can just save that. And as you can see, that just shows up in my list of users uh, on the system. 
So next we just need to configure Zigbee to MQTT. So we go back on configuration into add-ons, click on Zigbee to MQTT and we go to the configuration tab. And what you're going to need to do is put in the details of the username and password that you created previously. So just put those lines in here um, where I've gone and put mine. Now I've also gone and put in here the IP address of my uh, server of my home assistant Nook. Now the reason why I've done this is because I've already been through this process once and um, one of the issues that I actually faced was I was constantly getting a 502 um, bad gateway error um, when I was trying to navigate to the um, the basically the, the Zigbee uh, to MQTT uh, page, the user interface for it. And this was one of the uh, solutions that seem to have sorted that problem for um, quite a few users. So um, you may not need to put that in, but if you constantly are plagued by that problem, um, then put in the IP address of your server uh, just in that, that part of the config file there. And then just save that. Now, just before we get things started, we are going to have to try and find out where uh, Home Assistant sees our USB dongle. So for that, you're going to need to go back into configuration, into add-ons, and then into system. And over on the right-hand side on the host panel, there are three dots there. If you just click on that and then uh, choose the hardware option and just scroll down through the list until you come across the USB dongle. Uh, it should stand out because it'll have an awful lot of information against it. And what you're looking for here is the port that it has gone and identified itself on. So just copy that bit of text and you need to go back into configuration, back into add-ons, back into Zigbee to MQTT and into the configuration tab there. And then just at the very bottom of that configuration, if you add in an equivalent line, obviously, uh, change it to the USB port that you've just gone and copied from your hardware list and then just click on save and then we're ready to get things started so we're going to start Mosquito first so back into your configuration and add-ons and click on Mosquito and then click on start and then uh, basically do the same thing with Zigbee to MQTT uh, go into add-ons, click on the um, Zigbee to MQTT add-on and click on start and just give it uh, a few seconds, basically. It can be, uh, I, f I find kind of the Zigbee 2 MQTT a little bit slow at starting up, um, but once that's up and running, check your log file there as well on the, um, on the, the, the uh, tab for it. You should basically have a load of green lines there. If you've got anything in red, then something is not quite working um, as it should be. So you're gonna have to investigate there. But all being well, you'll have everything green. And uh, when you go back into your integrations, you should see a MQTT integration there. So just click on the configure button for MQTT and click on submit. And you are good to start adding devices to uh, Home Assistant. So what I'm going to go through now, I've got a couple of, um, well, some of the Akara devices that I showed you in one of my previous videos. So I'm going to set some of those up now in Home Assistant. So what I'm going to do now is just add in a couple of these Akara devices. So I'm going to add in a um, window sensor, door sensor, whatever you want to call it, and the temperature sensor. So we go into the Zigbee 2 MQTT option in the side panel on the left. And I'm just going to click at the top here to um, click on permit join. So this will allow me to add devices into the network. So um, you know, to, to pair these, you just click on the little button on the side of the device, hold it down for a few seconds until the little blue LED flashes. And then after a second or two, it will just show up then in Zigbee to MQTT. There you go. So um, basically, if I just go into the device map here, you can see this is connected to the Sonoff dongle. Um, you know, okay, it doesn't have a fantastic name at the moment. We can easily sort that out. So if I just rename that, uh, something a little bit more user friendly, and uh, you know, I'll now add in the uh, temperature sensor. So again, just hold down the button on the side to pair it, and after a couple of seconds, it'll show up uh, on the screen. This time we'll give it a friendly name from the get-go. And if I go back into the map, there you go. There's the two devices connected to the dongle. You can see the strength of the connection there as well. So 
all really quite straightforward to get set up, no issues whatsoever. And if I go back into my integrations and MQTT, you can see there I've now got two devices listed and I can click on that and there are those two Acara devices showing up there. So that's it guys, that's how you flash your Sonoff dongle uh, with um, the, the Python method rather than taking it apart and trying to press and hold down the little buttons whilst inserting it into the USB port. That route isn't for everybody, so you know this may well be the route for you. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. You know what did you think of this process? Um, you know, and anything else, any other feedback on the video, anything else that I've missed, let me know down below. Um, but as always, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.